so I am pretty sure this condenser motor is running backwards. Look. That ain't right. Yep, it won't blow this, it's blowing out here. But the blower motor is running the right way. I don't know if the scroll compressors are. They are running. It doesn't sound like they're running backwards. All right. Well, I know for starters, this motor is running backwards. But, and it's three phase. So I know my polarity isn't switched for the whole unit because my blower is running the right way. So let's at least switch the polarity on the condenser motor and see what happens. Yeah, look, it's just blowing this right off. So right from the factory, this motor either was wired wrong or we have the wrong polarity here, but we're gonna find out. All right, I switched polarity basically by just swapping my, my yellow and my blue wire. I just basically swapped them around. Now we are at least turning in the right direction. Because I'm blowing out here now. And my bag is sucking in. My panel's trying to suck in. So let's see what happens now and make sure our scroll compressors are pumping the right way. It doesn't sound like the scroll compressors are running backwards because they make an awful loud noise when they're running backwards. Sometimes they even have safeties in place to make sure they don't run backwards, but I don't see those safeties here. So. All right, let's let it run for a minute. I'm gonna see if my compressors are working the way they should. Now my compressor cut out. Both of them are cut out now. So my the polarity to my whole unit might be backwards, but my blower was running in the right direction, but it's a VFD. I don't know, we're gonna have to swap polarity to the whole to the whole unit and uh, and see what happens. Okay guys, I have a VFD driven blower motor. So this VFD is programmed to turn in one direction no matter what the polarity is. So that's why my blower is turning in the right direction and my compressors and my fan motor were not. So very interesting, huh? So hopefully, um, well, my compressors were in, um, were in overload, so I'm gonna have to cool them down and uh, get them started back up. But I got the polarity reversed or switched. The one with the red tape and the one with the blue tape, I switched those two around. I put my condenser motor wires back the way they were. So I think we might've just had a polarity reversed here. And when they started it up in heating mode, it didn't show its ass because the VFD was programmed to one run in one direction. <laughs> tricky stuff, guys, tricky stuff. All right, let's get this thing started back up. All right, guys, both my compressors are currently in thermal overload. Compressor number two, which was an overload to start with. And now compressor number one is in thermal overload. So I gotta get these bad boys cooled down leave now with pretty pretty good certainty these were running backwards and the condenser motor was running backwards so I just got to get them cooled down now we try to get a hose up here and um, and spray them spray them all with water this is a bummer my only water supply in the building is turned this does not work so, not sure what I'm gonna do but this does not work so Maybe I can get a bag of ice somewhere or something. Put it on top of the compressors. Found another one, but the freaking stem is all the way missing out of this one. Man. Well, guys, I gotta do what I gotta do. So I got a bucket here I filled up from inside. And I'm kind of just pouring it, pouring the water right on the compressor. I'm gonna do both of them. Hopefully I can get them out of thermal overload. 
All right, we got one of our compressors out of thermal overload. This guy is out. This guy here, let's see. No, he's still in thermal. All right, so let's work on getting this guy cooled down with a bucket of water. <laughs> You gotta do what you gotta do sometimes guys to get your customer back up and running especially just emptied that whole bucket and still in thermal overload so this guy once we get them back running the natural the natural flow of refrigerant through the compressor will help cool it down we just got to get it we just got to get it there so i'm gonna go grab another bucket of water and keep on pouring all right guys we got our other compressor out of thermal overload now Bam. We got our legs all wet doing it, but it's for uh, it's for the greater good. All right, so we're going to get power restored to this unit and turn it on and make sure our polarity is correct. Now. All right, my uh, my control is still in its startup. I just wanted to push the contactors in real quick, see how the compressor sounded. Here's compressor one. Here's compressor two. Now that they're running the right way, they actually do sound a lot quieter. They didn't sound, they didn't sound bad when I first got here, but you know, I, I, well, I wasn't sure. And let's, uh, but they were definitely loud and they were running backwards. So let's look at our fan now. Yep, our fan's running the right way too. Let's wait for this thing to uh, to time out, and we'll see how it runs. All right, we're back on and running. A lot quieter. Oh yeah, that sucks a lot. Cold. That one is too. Very cool. All right, the cool thing about this board here from York is you can. You can go in and check the sensors and see what they're reading. So we're gonna go ahead and hit enter. Then we're gonna go down to summary, I believe, summary, and then sensors. And then we're gonna go to sensors, supply air temperature. So our supply air temperature is currently 59.4 degrees. Right, we're gonna back up one. Return air temperature is 80 degrees. So we have about a 20 degree split right now, which is pretty good. Let's see what other sensors we got. Outside air temperature. I don't know where that's reading that at, but it's more than 71 up here. Maybe it's reading it in the shade in there. Uh, I'm not 100% sure where it's reading that at. Oh, it's reading it right there. You know why that's so low? You know why that's 71? Because it's plant. It's really about 90 up here, honestly. All right, let's back up. Let's see what else we got. Outside air temperature source. This is local input. Oh, it's telling me it's a local input. So basically, it's telling me the it's getting its information from from the unit sensor. Very cool. So I, um, on these York units, they all these sensors that it uses are all 10K sensors. And I did a video on how to test the 10K sensor. I'm gonna put it up here. I'm gonna put it up here for you guys, just in case you guys wanna check it out and see how to test the 10K sensor. Um, basically all the sensors in this unit are gonna be 10K. So just check that out in case you're wondering. All right, our supply air temperature is down to 53 degrees now. And our return is down to 77. So she's plugging right along. 52, 76. Yes sir, she's plugging right along. I just wanna make sure it doesn't get too cold and I have too much of a split. Because then we might have to turn or give it some outside air or something like that so i'm gonna keep an eye on it for another minute or so all right she's been 
running for a solid 15 minutes now. Our supply temperature is 50 degrees and our return temperature is 74. So we got a 24 degree split. Looking pretty good. All right, we're gonna button this thing up. We fix this one. All right, guys, we got those compressors cooled down. We got the polarity switch back right. And we got that customer back up and running. So pretty tricky with that blower running in the right direction, but we figured that out and we got them back up and running. All right, guys, please like and subscribe to the channel. I'm off to the next one.